Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd just like to welcome everyone here this morning to uh, Enid United Methodist Church. Uh, my name is Ron Talton, and I have the uh, pleasure this morning and the honor to be your liturgist. Okay, I did, did want to mention that if we happen to have any visitors with us this morning, uh, we want to extend a special welcome out to you, and we just ask that if you have the, uh, a chance after the service, please join us in the lounge, uh, and uh, there's some goodies back there, and we'd like to get to know you better, and then also there's a package of information back there about our church, so sure and pick that up. So. Okay, so we'll uh, begin the service with our prayer. indeed is my savior i am confident and unafraid my strength and my courage is the lord and he has been my savior with joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the grace and holy one of israel give thanks to the lord acclaim his name among the nations make known his deeds proclaim how exalted is his name Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. On this third Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of joy as well as the candles of hope and peace. When Christ comes into our lives, 
He brings the fullness of joy. He anoints our hearts with the oil of gladness. When Jesus was born, the angel said that his coming was good news and of great joy for all the people. Because Christ has come to us, we can live every day in the joy of the Lord. Praise to you, Our gospel lesson this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 45. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, 
Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called Son of the Highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, But how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son, old as she is? Everyone called her barren, and there she is, six months pregnant. Nothing, you see, is impossible with God. And Mary said, Yes, I see it all now. I am the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. Then the angel left her. Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight, straight to Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly. You are so blessed among women, and the babe in your womb so blessed. And why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord visits me. The moment the sound of your greeting enter my ears, the babe in my womb skip like a lamb for sheer joy. Blessed woman who believe what God said, believe every word would come true. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of this his holy word. So today we look at the word becomes flesh and how God's love for us just transcends to him coming here, which is a, is a great thing. Advent conspiracy is a, an idea of doing things differently than what the culture tells us is what we should be doing. And I, I think about this and I think about how to change things in my own life and I hear one of the songs that Tai Chi uh, uh, sang, and it's the one that says she has all these things and how it's all going to be different this year, and she's going to get her cards out, and she's going to go make special goodies to give to her friends, and she's going to go here and, <clears throat> excuse me, here and there, and she's going to get all these things done, and the music goes, and it, 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 um, Mark, just hop up and play a little bit of that song because this, this music runs in my head because I think that sometimes um, our mode at the Advent season isn't be still. It is this. This is what happens to us. Only it goes a little faster in my mind because there's a lot to do and you're going really, really fast and you have to get all these things done and then you never get them done. So she went and she sang this song, and so it's called It's Christmas, so if you want to Google it or whatever, it's not on the, the thing, but it's a reminder to us that we go faster and faster and faster. And we still don't get everything done, and it is the 16th of December, and no cards have been sent, and there is still things to do, and don't miss Christmas, because the real thing is that the Word became flesh. And God entered our world. So today we talk about that because the most important thing is the fact that Jesus came, that God came, that it was prophesied and it happened. The Messiah, Emmanuel, came to be with us. So we look at some things that we can possibly do and, and uh, one of them is is about how we go about things, to look at things a little bit differently, um, spend less, give more, maybe just not be all about shopping, but look at the ways that we give, we give more. And Sherry just um, thanked the congregation for being part in many ways on the Wonder Wreath and the many ways that you are part of giving to others that are in need. And so 
we have the right idea going, but how is it we can even give more in other ways that might not even be um, about money? Jesus said, people try to um, serve both God and money, but you can't. You must choose one or the other. We can't serve both God and serve money at the same time. We have to choose who we are going to serve. And so that was a a reminder um, from the Lord of of what we try to do. And so our question is, how can our celebrating the birth of the King of Kings be focused less on what we spend and more on giving from a place of true worship? And so what does that mean? How does, how does our true worship of the Lord evoke our giving of various things? And it may already be happening that our giving is that we really want to see others be blessed. And so we are part of giving to make sure that that happens. It might be so that we, um, we spend a little less on, on just things that won't last and we spend more on, on things that are going to be more eternal or allowing ourselves to be more focused on reaching others so that the joy that is lit for our, our, um, our candle this morning, that we express that to others, that there's a world out there that needs to know that Jesus was born, that Jesus came to earth, that the word became flesh. Look how excited Mary is, and she goes to Elizabeth, who the Holy Spirit fills and tells her, and allows her to know that this is God's child. The baby in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy. That baby is a miracle because it's born to a woman who would have thought she was too old to bear a child, and yet nothing is impossible with God. And Mary goes, and there's great excitement because something is taking place that isn't ordinary, that has happened by the hand of God. The word becomes flesh. And so we need to look at what we do during our Advent season and how does it become, as that music plays, so scattered? And how do we become in that space? And maybe you have it figured out um, already. But how do we pause and take time just to be still and to focus on what happened on that Christmas day? And so what would happen if we gave the gift of time? Sometimes the gift of time is is really important. It's about the relationships, and we give the gift of time to spend more time with the Lord, to focus more on what really happened because something happened that is beyond our our comprehension. The word which was in the very beginning became flesh. God comes to earth. Not in a spectacular, splendorous way, but in a humble way. He comes to earth and not just to be born as a tiny baby, but to die for the sins of man. And so Jesus comes to earth, Emmanuel, God with us. So what is this gift of time that we could spend? Maybe we spend more time with with our family members. Maybe we spend more time um, just connecting with the Lord and reading our scripture and and being still. One of my um, colleagues in ministry uh, that we're going through this crucible that I'm over this group of younger pastors, and we, we are doing this two-year program, and one of those colleagues in ministry said, you know, it's been so crazy. And I met with, with a spiritual director who said, I want you to just take your cup of coffee and do nothing. Sit for 20 minutes without doing anything. She said, I can't read. No, don't read. Don't do anything. Just be still. That means you're not looking on your, your phone at whatever. You're looking on your phone because you can look up all these things. You're just being still. And what happens in that stillness is God can come and, and dwell within you. You're just being still so God can speak. So maybe that's something to try just to take your tea or coffee or, or whatever and just sit still for 20 minutes without looking up anything, just allowing the Lord to to be present. 
So something about what if we gave the gift of time. And I've thought about that. I received a text message this week, and um, our little granddaughter who I've spoken of before, Millie, isn't yet two. But she will periodically say that she needs Grandma to come and play with her. And so on this particular text message was this little picture, and it was early in the morning, and she has the saddest of faces, and her dad's holding her near, and he sends me this message. She wants Grandma. And I thought, you know, the gift of time, and I couldn't go on that right then, but the gift of time is more important than anything else I can give to Millie is she just wants to spend time. And so who do we need to spend time with that we're missing out spending time, a gift of time? The other thing is that we could give more, and that is more of the gift that we celebrate in our relationships, that we don't lose track in the hustle and bustle of the relationships that, that are important to us and that we have. And then what are the give, best gifts that have to do with relationships? And so I went through the house. Our house is full of these things. But I went through and I just took a few pictures. Because they are a few pictures that represent people in our lives. And so there's lots of little hands. There's not enough little hands at the moment. But one year, one of our presents were the children, all the whole family, John and Becca's family, had their handprints taken and they made the tree. And the family tree, well, now they need to add a few more handprints because we're missing little ones. But nevertheless, it signifies when I look at that family, that's important. It signifies relationships. Christopher, one year, um, um, you can't quite, well, maybe you can read it, but he made the, the tree that says, Joy, Love, Jesus, Emmanuel. That was his Christmas present, something that he created. So sometimes when we create things and we make things and give them to people, they have great importance to us. The lamp in the center, my dad, when he was in the, in, served in the Merchant Marines and went all over the world, um, India was one of the places he went. And on that tour, he, uh, he bought a, a lamp and two bookends made out of ebony wood. And they are hand carved and there's animals on there. You can't see them quite. And at some point, um, years before he passed away, he gave my brother the bookends, and he gave the light, the lamp to me, and he rewired it, and he gave it to me. So when I see it, it is, it's something that came from Dad. So it's, um, it reminds me. It reminds me of the time he spent in service, but it reminds me of him. And so that's why it's a cool gift. It's a cool gift to me because it connects to the person. The head of Christ, um, ministry friends who came in, and um, have a ministry where they do the first century um, gospel, the first century um, church, and they do carving and tell a story out of wood. One year, as he came to minister to our church, and um, they travel around the United States, the Burleys, he, he uh, carved that head of Christ as he told the story and then presented it to us. Uh, to to keep and there's a tear in the, in the wood there's like a tear running down the eyes of Christ and so it's a it's another connection of those folks in in ministry and those folks that we connect with in in different ways and John decided to make a wooden music sta- wooden music stands one year and so that was his his gift to us one year. There's lots of those things that remind me of people. They remind me of relationships. It's not that I could go out and sell them and they would be worth a whole lot of money. It's not about that. It's about the people that are behind them. And so as, you, as we realize that the gifts that are most treasured are the gifts of relationships and the things that we do for one another that help build those relationships, Our giving can reflect in some small way the power and beauty of God coming into the world as one of us. So we begin to think differently, not just buying gifts because it's Christmas and it's time to buy gifts because it's not anybody. It could be your birthday on Christmas Day. But the reason Christmas is present because it has Christ in the middle of that is it's Jesus' birthday. And how do we give to the King of Kings? 
So we can't look at this without looking at the incarnation, which is the time when, the moment when Jesus, the divine Son of God, the Father, came to earth as a human baby. It's that flesh, the word, the word being made flesh. And there's, um, there's scriptures, all different scriptures that talk to us about that happening. In, John, in the Gospel of John 1.14, it says, The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. I like that. That's the, that comes in that message translation, but I like the idea that Jesus moved into the neighborhood. He moved into our neighborhood, my neighborhood, your neighborhood. And what an amazing thing that the angels sang, the angels sang of his coming. A star shone so that kings from afar could find the Christ child who was born in a manger, not still there by the time they got there. Shepherds dropped everything they were doing. They dropped watching the sheep, and they were the lowliest. That was the lowliest of jobs to be a shepherd, but they, they went to see who was born. Why is it in, in 2018 we don't have the same excitement about what happened? Something happened that, was, that changed the world forevermore. It changes our lives forevermore if we allow that to be part of our life. If we take Jesus as our own personal Savior, it changes our life forevermore. And it goes beyond this life into our eternity. For Jesus promises that there would be, he would make a room for us. Something happened that's great. And it's exciting. And I was so excited that Sophie was doing well and that those twins were here and so excited to know that about that birth of those, those two precious babies. So excited. We need to be just as excited that Jesus came, that the word became flesh. Because we need to tell a world that doesn't know the real meaning of Christmas. We need to tell them of what happened in great joy and exuberation, the same as we will announce the coming of precious ones into our family. The incarnation is what we celebrate when we gather to worship or at the communion table. It is the good news. And God's rescue operation was put into effect through Jesus' death on, and resurrection. He's rescuing. He came to rescue us from the sin of the world. And so the news is important to tell all people. And so we have the hope and we have joy and we have peace. We have love that never ends because the word became flesh. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. He came. And so that is Christmas. Something happened. And it goes beyond the da 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 as we scutter about. It goes beyond that. It's bigger than that. It's worth our singing over, even if we don't have good voices. It's worth uh, praising over. It's worth telling your family about this Christmas that you pause. And even if they aren't so connected to church or they're not connected to Jesus, that you say, you know what? I want to share the greatest thing ever. That's why we, we are here about Christmas. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you came we thank you that something happened that's beyond our comprehension because you who, who were in the beginning, you who is now and will always be, your word, it became flesh. You came to earth. You came to earth to rescue people like me and to rescue people like us who, who fall away from you. You came to bring something that is greater than any present that we could ever buy. Because you came to give us a greater joy, a greater peace, a greater love, a greater hope. You came to change the world. You still come to change the world. And we get the opportunity to partner with you and be like the angels proclaiming what happened. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.